This is The Reporter's Notebook, hosted by Elaine Shane. Welcome to this entry in the DTN Reporter's Notebook. DTN Markets Editor Katie Meisick joins us today as we look at some of the highlights of the Ag Confidence Index that's put together by DTN and the Progressive Farmer. Katie, first of all, give us just a, a brief background on how this is done. Well, DT and the Progressive Farmer has been conducting this survey um, before planting, before harvest, and after harvest every year since uh, 2010. So we've got about five solid years of history under our belt with this survey. We usually get about 500 farmers from across the country that roughly reflects the latest ag, ag census put out by USDA. We ask them how they feel about current input prices, how they feel about current farm income, and then we ask them where they think those two indicators will be 12 months from now. Now we split it off of what the producers think as well as what the agribusinesses think. So let's start with the producers. Where do the overall ag confidence index end up? Well, it, is, it was not surprisingly the lowest ag confidence index we've had since we began surveying. Um, we did start surveying in sort of that, those early years of the corn boom. Um, our latest index came in at 92.7. In our methodology, 100 is considered neutral. So this is, you know, much to the low side. Um, it's 6.1 points lower than our lowest ever. Um, so it, it's, it's a sharp drop off, which is not totally unexpected given current commodity prices, current input prices, and the choices farmers are having to make at this point in time. Katie, let's touch a little bit more on why it was so low. You touched on some of the reasons, but can you go more into that? Absolutely. I think one of the more interesting points I found here, Elaine, was that when it comes to input prices, this is the by far the, the lowest reading we've seen. We found that 53% of respondents to our survey call current input prices bad. That's, you know, by far and away the highest number we've had. It's the first time it's been a majority of our respondents. Um, but that's been on the uptrend since, about, since March of last year, of 2014. Um, when you look at it too, more than 50% think input prices are going to be the same 12 months from now. So farmers are not only feeling bad about right now, they don't see much hope a year from now. The other side of that is incomes. And for the first time in our survey's history, Farmers who rated their income as bad was higher than farmers who said it was normal. It was 44 to 42%. So we've seen a little shift there towards the, you know, the, the negative and the downside, thinking that this is a really tough time for farmers. And when you look at incomes again, more than 50% of our respondents think they'll be the same or worse from a year from now. Were you seeing any difference on region or by commodity? Well, we always see a little bit of difference when we look at the regions because of the different types of crop and farming operations in different areas. The Midwest historically, at least during following corn prices and following the, the boom there, um, has, has been the lowest. Right now is 85.3, so that's significantly lower than our general um, overall score. And it really is interesting because I like to look at the trend over time. In March 2012, f when farmers looked at their present situation, their evaluation of that number was 144. In this reading, it was 79.8. So there has been a really sharp drop off about how farmers are feeling in the present moment in the Midwest. When you look at producers in the Southwest and the Southeast, they also have the pessimistic scores, 98 in the Southwest, 97 in the Southeast, but they both have fair, uh, above 100 numbers for their present situation. So there's still some optimism, there's still some feeling good about current prices in those areas. Let's turn to agribusinesses. Where was the overall ag index there? The overall index was at 98.3, which is a close to neutral number still on the pessimistic side. It is higher than what we saw in August and what the agribusinesses were expecting before this harvest came in. One of the grain elevator operations I spoke with said, you know, the prices just didn't get as low as they thought they might. And they, they were able to get in some good pre-harvest you know, book some pre-harvest grain at good prices that they're going to be able to turn around and make a profit on. Now, how are they uh, looking at farm incomes and it's affecting their businesses? They say it's a little bit softer on the agribusiness side because farmers still need to buy. So there's still, you know, farmers who are still buying inputs. They have really delayed their seed sales. That's something that we're seeing out there. They're being a little bit more critical of where and who they buy their fertilizer from and they're price shopping a bit more. That affects agribusinesses, but their quantity of sales generally doesn't get that big of an effect is what I'm told. Now, again, do we see anything regarding regions or by commodity that's affecting these businesses? Um, it, you don't really see that in the agribusiness index. We have over 100 businesses that respond, and they span a wide array of businesses, some of which have advantages when prices are low and grain prices are cheap and others that do not. So, you know, everything from transportation to crop insurance and bankers, 
um, crop consultants. There's a wide variety in this. Uh, clearly, the ag equipment dealers and the ones doing, you know, the, the, the used equipment and new equipment are the ones that are struggling the most. Now, you did an interview with the ag economist who created the survey, and he always looks through the results each time. What were some of his conclusions? He really said that, you know, this, this survey is starting to reflect what economists have been calling for for a while now, and that's sort of a prolonged downtrend in the ag economy. Farmers are having to make some very tough choices, and the, the economist really thinks it's going to be that way for another few years unless there's some, some major weather events. And even in the case of that, it might not get back to the levels we saw in, you know, 28, 2012. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. With Katie Mysick, I'm Elaine Shane, and that's today's entry in the DTN Reporter's Notebook. Thanks for joining us, and have a good evening from DTN. This has been the Reporter's Notebook from the DTN Progressive Farmer Newsroom.